Hello and welcome. This video is about isentropic compression. If you're familiar with this formulation and would just like to see how to solve this problem in a pressure entropy diagram, check our specific video for that. If you would like to see how to use an equation of state to solve this problem in the XSCOS package, please check our playlist and watch the corresponding video. What I will do is to simplify the mass, energy, and entropy balances for the case of continuous, steady state, adiabatic, and reversible compression of a fluid stream. In this analysis, I will neglect changes to kinetic and potential energies. Before we move on, it's important to note some keywords. Adiabatic, reversible, steady state, and the fact that changes to kinetic and potential energies are negligible. We'll use all these keywords in the solution that will follow. This slide shows an schematic of the situation. The compressor has a single input stream and a single output stream. If you are familiar with solving problems such as this one, you may take some shortcuts but here we will follow a very systematic procedure to build the solution. We will apply in sequence the mass balance, the energy balance, and the entropy balance. We start by examining the mass balance. What it shows is that the mass accumulation, represented by the left-hand side of this equation, depends on the input flows and on the output flows. We will now use one of the keywords we find in the problem statement, in particular that the operation is at steady state. This means that the properties don't change with time, and the mass inside the compressor will remain constant. This means that the derivative on the left-hand side is equal to zero. If we use the condition of steady state operation, and remember that we only have one input and one output stream, we get this expression. In summary, from the mass balance, we find out that the input and output flow rates are equal. Then, in the absence of chemical reactions, the molar flow rates in and out are also equal. Let us look at the energy balance now. The term on the left-hand side represents the energy inside the compressor, how it changes with time. On the right-hand side, I have a term that accounts for the contribution of the input streams, a term that accounts for the contributions of the output streams, a term that represents the energy change because of expansion or compression, of the equipment volume, the heat transfer rate, and the shaft power. We'll now apply the keywords present in the problem statement and see how they allow us to simplify the energy balance. We first apply the condition of steady state operation. The term on the left hand side, which the time derivative vanishes because the energy inside the compressor will not change. We use the condition of steady state operation again, this time to look at the right hand side of this equation. In it, there is a time derivative of the system volume, and because the properties are constant in time, this derivative is equal to zero and this term will vanish. Next, we use the fact that the compressor is adiabatic and the heat transfer rate on the right hand side of the equation is therefore equal to zero. The problem statement also asks us to neglect changes to kinetic and potential energies. While these energies are not necessarily equal to zero, the difference between the kinetic energy of the output and input streams will be taken as equal to zero and likewise differences in potential energy will be taken as equal to zero. After applying all these keywords and conditions, 
we have a much simpler form of the energy balance applicable to the situation we have. The only terms left are the enthalpies of the input and output streams and the shaft power required to run the compressor. At this point, it's useful to remember that one of the questions we have to answer is the shaft power. Thus, we can isolate the shaft power on the left-hand side of the equation and see how it depends on the enthalpies of the input and output streams. This is the final form of the energy balance written in terms of molar variables. Next, we move to the entropy balance. On the left-hand side of the equation, we have the change of system entropy with time. And on the right-hand side, how it depends on the entropies of the input and output streams, on the entropy changes associated with heat transfer, and on the entropy generation rate. As we did before, let's apply the keywords we find in the problem statement to see if we can simplify the entropy balance. First, we apply the condition of steady state operation. And as in the energy balance, the left-hand side of the equation vanishes because the entropy of the fluid inside the compressor will not change with time. Then we use that the compressor is adiabatic. And we cross out the entropy changes caused by heat transfer because there is no heat transfer. Finally, we use the condition that the compressor operates reversibly. This means that the rate of entropy generation, the last term on the right-hand side of the equation, is equal to zero. Crossing out all these terms and remembering again that we only have one input and one output stream, we find equation 18. If we combine this result with the mass balance, we find out that operation is isentropic. Here is the equivalent result written on a molar basis. Here are simplified forms of the mass, energy, and entropy balances ready for use if you are going to apply a pressure entropy diagram. And here are the simplified forms of the mass, energy, and entropy balances on a molar basis suitable for applications with equations of state that will give you the molar properties.